هو ماي دير ام دكتور علاء مصباح بروفيسور في اوبستيتريكس اند جينيكولوجي فاكلتي اوف ميديسن منصوره يونيفرستي اور توبيك توداي اباوت ماتيرنال كولابس اند بريجنسي اند بيريو اوف كورس ات از فيري امبورتنت سبجكت سو وات ذا اوبجيكتيف وي ار جوينج تو ديسكاس ذا ماتيرنال كولابس اند بريجنسي اند بيريو اكوردينج تو ذا جايد لاينز اوف رويال كوليدج اوف اوبستيتريكس اند جينيكولوجيست بوبليش ان 2019 اوكي First, we should know we should know the definition of maternal collapse. What is the definition of maternal collapse? Maternal collapse is defined as an acute event, acute event involving the cardiorespiratory system and or central nervous system, resulting in a reduced or absent conscious level, which may reach up to cardiac arrest and death. at any stage in pregnancy and up to six weeks after birth. So this complication, it happened all over the pregnancy and up to six weeks after birth is related to pregnancy and barbarium. So we call it maternal collapse. Okay. Can women at risk of impending collapse be identified early? There are many studies tried to find the score to detect the early warning symptoms and signs. Okay? The first modified early warning score, it's called MEWS system, M-E-W-S system, were introduced on the basis that deterioration in ensemble physiological vital signs will precede significant clinical deterioration. And that early intervention will reduce morbidity. So any change in vital signs should be detected early before the, the pregnant lady become critically ill. This is the idea of this first modified early warning score. Okay, what are the causes of maternal collapse? So maternal collapse can result of a number of causes. And a systematic approach should be taken to identify the cause. And we should remember all the time the four H and the four T's. Four H and the four T's. This is reversible causes like hypoxia, hyperkalemia or hypokalemia or electrolyte disturbance, hypovolemia, hypothermia. This is four H. This is the four H. Hypoxia. Hyperkalemia or hypokalemia, hypothermia or hyperthermia, hypovolemia. Okay, this is a 4H. What is the 4Ts? Thromboembolism, toxicity, tamponade, tension pneumothorax. Okay, so to make it easy for you, please remember the 4H and the 4T. So, you should also. Be familiar with the physiological and anatomical changes in the pregnancy because these changes may affect resuscitation. Okay? So it is very important. It is essential that anyone, whatever, clinician, paramedics, emergency department staff, all those involved in the resuscitation of pregnant women is aware of the physiological difference. Okay? You should know the physiological difference. Okay, for example, we have some variables like orthocable compression after 20 weeks gestational age. We have also difficult intubation. We have also change in the lung function and the ventilation. We have also aspiration or Mendelssohn syndrome. So there is Many problems can happen due to this physiological change. Let us start with the orthocaval compression. Orthocaval compression significantly reduces cardiac output from 20 weeks of gestation onwards. And the efficacy of chest compression during resuscitation. So, this orthocaval compression by this enlarged uterus causing orthocaval compression. Decreasing cardiac output after 20 weeks gestational age and onwards 
also it affected the chest compression during resuscitation so this is very important and we will say how to manage this during the second is the changes in level in lung function diaphragmatic splinting and the increased oxygen consumption make pregnant woman become hypoxic more readily and to make ventilation more difficult okay, this is the second change third change difficult intubation is more likely in pregnancy why there is difficult intubation it is more difficult because of weight gain in pregnancy large breast inhabiting the working space and the laryngeal edema during the pregnancy okay also pregnant women are at increased risk of aspiration the aspiration pneumonia like mendelssohn syndrome why this happened during the pregnancy secondary to progesterone effect causing relaxation of the esophageal sphincter along with raised intra-abdominal pressure secondary to the gravity uterus also during labor with the increased intra-abdominal pressure also is the problem okay following maternal opioid administration there can be also delay in gastric emptying so all these factors will result in aspiration whatever the relaxation of the esophageal sphincter under the effect of progesterone or increased intra-abdominal pressure or medication like opioid with delayed emptying of the stomach and this risk of aspiration can be minimized by doing what? By early intubation with effective cricoid pressure. Okay? So early intubation with effective cricoid pressure is a good solution. Also, use of H2 antagonist and antacid prophylactically in all women considered to be at high risk of obstetric intervention during labor. Okay? Okay, what is the optimal initial management of maternal collapse? Maternal collapse resuscitation should follow the resuscitation council guidelines using the standard ABCDE approach with some modification for maternal physiology, in particular relief of aortocaval compression, for example. What is the ABCD approach? A for airway, B for breath, C for circulation, D for the differential diagnosis or disabilities E for exposure so this is as regard the ABCDE approach okay if maternal cardiac arrest occur in the community setting basic life support should be administered and rapid transfer arranged in the United Kingdom resuscitation is conducted according to the guidelines of resuscitation council these guidelines include adult basic life support, adult advanced life support, and automated external defibrillation algorithm and recommendations. Okay, tell me more, please, about the management. In the event of maternal collapse, signs of life should be sought if the assessor is confident in this how he will be confident by checking the breathing is there is breathing or not is there is pulsation the carotid vessel so you should search for breathing and the carotid pulse immediately if signs of life are detected you are going to use the standard abcde approach so, ABCD approach should be taken. What if there is any doubt in the detection of signs of life? Cardiopulmonary resuscitation should be commenced. So, immediately, cardiopulmonary resuscitation should start if you can't detect signs of life. The woman should be placed in the left lateral position 
obstetric review should be sought, the need of, uh, for oxygen therapy should be assessed, and the adequate vascular access should be gained. An alert, verbal stimulus, pain stimulus, and responsiveness assessment should be undertaken as an alteration of the consciousness can be a sign of critical illness. The code of the maternal collapse should be rapidly identified and treated to prevent potential progression to maternal cardiorespiratory arrest. Let us start with the relieving aortocaval compression. Please look to this picture. Manual displacement, as in this picture, of the uterus to the left. This is the left side. This is manual displacement. You can use one hand like this or two hands. Manual displacement of the uterus to the left is effective in relieving aortocaval compression. So, we want to relieve the aortocaval compression. We'll do manual displacement of the uterus to the left. So, this happened in women pregnant 20 weeks or more. Or where the uterus is valuable at or above the level of the umbilicus. To make it easy for you, if you feel the uterus above, at the level of above the, um, uh, the level of umbilicus, you should do manual displacement of the uterus to the left. This permit effective chest compression in the subine position in the event of cardiac arrest. Okay. What else improved? Left lateral tilt of the woman, as in this picture. Left lateral tilt of the woman. The woman on firm surface like this one, and it is rotated to the left 30 degree from 15 to 30 degree like this. Okay. This left lateral tilt in a firm surface will relieve aortocaval compression in the majority of pregnant women and they still allow effective chest compression to be performed in the event of cardiac arrest. So, although I did this manual left lateral tilt, I can still do the chest compression as cardiorespiratory. Okay. In case of major trauma, the spine should be protected with a spinal board before any tilt is applied. We know that we should be careful. If there is trauma to the spine, you should the spine should be protected with a spinal board before any tilt is applied. In absence of a spinal board, manual displacement of the uterus should be used. What about airway? Intubation in an unconscious woman with cuffed endotracheal tube should be performed immediately by an experienced anesthetist. And supplemental high flow oxygen should be administered as soon as possible to counteract rapid deoxygenation. What about breathing? Supplemental high flow oxygen should be administered as soon as possible. Bag and the mask ventilation or insertion of a simple supraglottic airway should be undertaken until the patient can be achieved. What about circulation? If the airway is clear and there is no breathing, chest compression should be recommended immediately. And chest compression should be commenced immediately in the absence of a cardiac output. Compression may be made difficult because of obesity and if the woman is, an, is in the tilted position. Hand position should be over the center of the chest. And it is important to ensure that the direction of compression is perpendicular to the chest wall. So hand in the center of the chest wall and also perpendicular to the chest wall. Okay? If lateral tilt is employed, 
as we said before, then the angle of tilt must be taken into account when performing chest compression. Immediate and the competent chest compression have been found to have a direct impact on maternal outcome. Then, at the same moment, two sides, two wide poor cannula, at least 16 bush. Okay, so two wide bore cannula should be inserted as soon as possible. If peripheral venous axis is not possible, early consideration of central venous axis or intraosseous axis or venous cut down should be considered. So either you have a peripheral venous axis for this two wide bore cannula. If not available, you can use central venous axis or venous cut down, okay? To maintain circulation. Because there should be an aggressive approach to volume replacement. Although caution should be exercised in the context of preeclampsia or eclampsia, as we all know about this. So I need access to intravenous line, then aggressive approach to volume replacement. Abdominal ultrasound by skilled operator can assist in the diagnosis of concealed hemorrhage with, re with retained or retroplacental hematoma, larger hematoma, and so on. It can be diagnosed by abdominal ultrasound. The same defibrillation energy level should be used as in non-pregnant women. So there is no difference between pregnant and the non-pregnant. The same defibrillation energy level should be used. What about drugs? There should be no alteration in algorithm, drugs, or doses used in resuscitation council protocol, as in UK. Other consideration. Sort of the resuscitation process, consideration should be given to the cause of the collapse. While you are doing resuscitation, you are searching also for the cause of this collapse. So that ongoing therapy can be directed towards a specific cause to optimize outcome. Okay, if you know the cause, you can manage early and the outcome will be better. Resuscitation effort should be continued until a decision is taken by a consultant of the and the consultant and a test to discontinue resuscitation effort. This decision should be made in consensus with the cardiac arrest team. Then the important question, when, where, and how should Perimortem cesarean section be performed. Okay, in women over 20 weeks of gestation, if there is no response to correctly perform it, cardio pulmonary resuscitation within four minutes of maternal collapse, remember four minutes of maternal collapse, or if resuscitation is continued beyond disease time. Then, perimortem cesarean section should be undertaken to assess the maternal system. Ideally, this should be achieved within five minutes of the collapse. Many studies try to find what it, the time which wind pass may cause fetal brain damage. They found between five and six minutes. So, you should interfere four to five minutes maximum. And some studies detected that if you uh, you interfere, you did perimortem cesarean four minutes after arrest, the 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 survival rate of the fetus will be sixty eight percent or something like that. So four minutes is a cutoff. Maximum five. Okay. 
So within five minutes, you should interfere. And please remember also, we are not doing pre-mortem cesarean just for the fetal survival or to save the life of the fetus. We are saving also the mother because sometimes cesarean section and the delivery of the baby will help in resuscitation of the mother. So first, the first aim would be helping the resuscitation of the mother by different means, we re relieve the aortic cable compression of this high, large gravity uterus. We can do chest compression easily. We can do our treatment easier and better. And we can give a chance for resuscitation. Also, th through the abdominal wound, through the incision, we can do compression on the, on the heart, maybe better than external chest compression so please remember we are saving the life of the mother and also we are saving the life of the fetus this is our target perimortem cesarean section shouldn't be delayed by moving the woman it should be performed warm maternal collapse has occurred and resuscitation is taking place so there is no time to move to different place <coughs> so it should be done where this the the resuscitation is taking place okay and the operator should use the incision which facilitate the most rapid access maybe midline vertical decision is is rapid one okay or some prefer the suprabubic transverse incision okay Scalpel and the umbilical cord clamp should be available on the resuscitation trolley in all areas where maternal collapse may occur. If you know that this area in which maternal collapse may happen, this area should contain scalpel and the umbilical cord clamps and the ligature, okay, at any time because you don't know which time will happen the collapse. In this should be available on the resuscitation trolley in all areas where maternal collapse may occur. Okay, what does the ongoing management consist of? Senior staff with appropriate experience should be involved at an early stage. As we said before, multidisciplinary team will be involved in this maternal collapse okay transfer should be supervised by an adequately skilled team with appropriate equipment ongoing management depends on the underlying cause of the collapse the woman should be transferred to an appropriate environment to ensure optimal ongoing care this would usually mean transfer to a high dependency or critical care area with appropriate staff and monitoring facilities. Let us start with the common problem for maternal, common cause for maternal collapse, which is hemorrhage, like antepartum hemorrhage or postpartum hemorrhage, antepartum like placenta previa or placental abruption. In case of maternal collapse secondary to antepartum hemorrhage, the fetus and the placenta should be delivered immediately to allow control of the hemorrhage. In case of massive placental abruption, cesarean section may occasionally be indicated even if the fetus is dead to allow rapid control of the hemorrhage. Intravenous tranexamic acid significantly reduce mortality due to postpartum hemorrhage. What about venous thromboembolism? Venous thromboembolism discussed discussed before in the in the thrombosis and the embolism during pregnancy and the perperium in green top guideline. You can search for it, but you should know that intravenous unfractionated heparin is the preferred initial treatment in massive pulmonary embolism with cardiovascular compromise. Okay. And you can go to see the details of venous thromboembolism during pregnancy. 
amniotic fluid embolism, another important cause for the collapse. It's very dangerous and the survival rate is very low. The management of amniotic fluid embolism is supportive rather than specific as there is no proven effective survey. Yearly involvement of senior experienced staff, including midwife, obstetrician, anesthetist, hematologist, intensivist, is essential to optimize the outcome. Coagulopathy needs yearly aggressive treatment, including the use of fresh frozen plasma. Recombinant factor 7 should only be used if coagulopathy cannot be corrected by massive blood component replacement, as it causes poorer outcome in women with amniotic fluid embolism. In addition to resuscitation and supportive measure, arrhythmia may develop and will require standard treatment. Inotropic support is likely to be needed, and the measurement of cardiac output may halt direct therapy and avoid fluid overload. Remember that fluid overload will exacerbate pulmonary edema and increase the risk of acute respiratory distress syndrome. Please remember that. Various other therapies have been tried, including steroids, heparin, hemofiltration, lasmapheresis. Usually it is done in single cases. There is no robust evidence to support the use. There is no strong evidence to support the use, but it is used in certain cases. Delivery of the fetus and the placenta should be performed as soon as possible, if or not done already. In case of amniotic fluid embolism, the incidence of uterine atony is increased in this condition. Okay, and to contribute to postpartum hemorrhage, so will aggravate the problem. And of course, postpartum hemorrhage should be managed according to the guideline. What about another cause for maternal collapse, which is the cardiac disease? After successful resuscitation, cardiac cases should be managed by an expert cardiology team. After initial resuscitation, the ongoing management of cardiac disease is similar to that in the non-pregnant state, although in many cases, delivery will be necessary to facilitate this. Although thrombolysis can be associated with significant bleeding on the placental side, should be given to women with acute coronary insufficiency. So if there is acute coronary insufficiency, give thrombolysis, but be careful about the bleeding from placental side. So, cushion should be exercised in the very operative period. Another important cause for maternal collapse is the septic shock. Yeah, septic shock should be managed in accordance with surviving sepsis campaign guideline. Okay. Bundle should be applied immediately or within six hours and has been shown to be significantly improved survival rate. Including what? Measure serum lactate. Obtain blood picture and the culture swab period to antibiotic administration. Then administer prospectrum antibiotic within the first hour of recognition of severe sepsis and septic shock according to local protocol. In the event of hypotension or lactate more than 4 millimole per liter, begin a rapid administration of 30 milli per kilogram crystalloid to be completed within three hours of diagnosis. Once adequate volume replacement has been achieved, a vasopressor like noradrenaline, vasopressin, adrenaline, in addition, if required, okay? and or inotrope like dobutamine may be used to maintain mean arterial pressure more than 65 millimeters. Further management consists of in patient with persistent hypotension despite all what I did before the fluid resuscitation and so on. 
and the lactate also more than four millimole per liter. Dynamic variable of fluid status such as transesophageal, Doppler, and deletive dilution cardiac output are preferred to static variables like what? Like central venous pressure or pulmonary artery occlusion pressure. And the use of central venous pressure alone to guide fluid resuscitation can no longer be justified. So the variable, dynamic variable is better, of course. Consider a steroid if unresponsive to adequate fluid resuscitation and the vasopressor syrup. Maintain oxygen saturation at more than 94% with facial oxygen. Consider transfusion if hemoglobin less than seven gram per cent. Another cause for maternal collapse is magnesium sulfate toxicity. What is the antidote for magnesium sulfate? We know that we may need magnesium sulfate as regard treatment of preeclampsia and eclampsia. If toxicity happens and the collapse happens, the antidote to magnesium toxicity is 10 milli 10% calcium gluconate or 10 milli 10% calcium chloride. So either use calcium gluconate or calcium chloride. 10 milli 10% by slow intravenous injection. Another cause for maternal collapse, local anesthetic toxicity. Local anesthetic toxicity is suspected. If it is suspected, stop injection immediately. Stop. This is the first line treatment. Stop. Don't continue the injection of local anesthesia. Lipid rescue should be used in cases of collapse secondary to local anesthetic toxicity. Why lipid? It was found that lipid decrease the amount of local anesthetic in the cardiac muscle. It removed this local acidic from the cardiac muscle, which causes cardiotoxicity. So, intralipid 20% should be available in all hospitals offering maternity services. It is important in case of local anesthetic toxicity. Manage arrhythmia as usual, recognizing that they may be very refractory to treatment. As I said, the mechanism by which lipid reverse local anesthetic cardiotoxicity may be increasing clearance, clearance from cardiac tissue. What about eclampsia? Eclampsia should be managed in accordance with the NICE guideline, hypertension and pregnancy, diagnosis and management. You can find it. Intracranial hemorrhage also is another cause of maternal collapse and neurodiologist uh, neuroradiologist sorry and the neurosurgeon both of them should be involved the neuroradiologist and the neurosurgeon both of them should be involved in the care of pregnant women with intracranial hemorrhage at the earliest opportunity. Why internal enterocranial hemor hemorrhage happen? It may happen due to hypertension, or it may happen due to trauma, or another causes. Anaphylaxis, another cause of maternal collapse, important cause of injury. In case of anaphylaxis, all potential causative agents should be removed. And the ABCDE approach to assessment and the resuscitation follows. In case of collapse assumed to be due to anaphylaxis, mast cell tryptase level can be useful in confirming the diagnosis. Please remember mast cell tryptase level. You should ask for this one if you're suggesting anaphylaxis. If the anaphylactic reaction occurs in the community, the woman should have a basic life support and be transferred to the hospital sitting as quickly as possible unless suitably trained health care professional is present in this area with appropriate equipment and the drugs in which 
case definitive resuscitation and the treatment should be commenced. He can give corticosteroid, can give antihistaminic, or if he uh, professional, he can also give the adrenaline injection. So this is life saving. So the treatment of anaphylaxis is one to one thousand adrenaline, five hundred microgram equal to 0.5 milli intramuscular this dose for intramuscular use only adjuvant therapy consists of chlorpheniramine 10 milligram which is antihistaminic and hydrocortisone 200 milligram both are given intramuscular or by slow intravenous injection this as a management of anaphylaxis what are the outcome of the mother and the baby after maternal collapse? Um, outcome for mother and the babies depend on the cause of the collapse, gestational age, and access to emergency care with survival rate being poorer if the collapse occurs out of the hospital. Maternal cardiac arrest, maternal survival rate of over 50% have been reported. Who should be on the team? In addition to the general arrest team, there should also be a senior midwife and obstetrician and the uh, obstetric anesthetist included in the team in cases of maternal collapse. The most senior obstetrician and the senior anesthetist should be called at the time of cardiopulmonary arrest. Called. The neonatal team should be called early if delivery is likely if antepartum collapse over 22 weeks of gestation where the woman survives a consultant intensivist should be involved as soon as possible lastly documentation is important really in such conditions accurate documentation is essential in all cases of maternal collapse whether or not resuscitation is successful. Training is very important. Why? All generic life support training should consider the adaptation of cardiopulmonary resuscitation in pregnant women. All maternal staff should have annual, formal, multidisciplinary training in generic life support and the management of maternal collapse. It's very important to save life of the woman. Life support training improves resuscitation skills. Small group multidisciplinary interactive practical training is recommended to improve the management of maternal collapse. At the end, the debriefing. Debriefing is very important. Because maternal collapse can be associated with post-traumatic stress disorder, postnatal depression, and the tocophobia. And remember that the woman is affected and her family and even the staff involved. Debriefing is an important part for holistic maternal care and should be offered by competent professionals to support the ongoing mental health of all concerned. So the briefing is recommended for the woman, the family, and the staff involved in the event. Let us go to our end of our lecture with the key points. Please remember that maternal collapse is one of the biggest challenges in obstetrics. A logical structured approach using ABCDE should be used in the management of collapsed patient and I told you A for, A for airway, B for breath, C for circulation, D for differential diagnosis of disabilities, E for exposure of the patient. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation should be modified by securing the airway as early as possible and displacing the uterus manually to the left, lateral as I said before. Multidisciplinary team should be involved in the management of critically ill pregnant women. 
Peri mortem cesarean section should be undertaken after four minutes of unsuccessful cardiopulmonary resuscitation. All staff members should have annual training on obstetric emergency and resuscitation. Please remember this point is very important and saving life. Debriefing is recommended for the woman, the family, and the staff involved in the event. And this is the end of my lecture. I hope it was clear enough. Please go to Amazon to find my box, textbook of obstetric, textbook of gynecology, contraception handbook, multiple choice question book, medical disorder and pregnancy book, and the newcomer gynecology, <coughs> gynecology oncology book. This is the newcomer. Okay, you can find all of these six books on Amazon through this link. I'll write it in a comment, and also I write a comment for link of my YouTube channel where you can find many other lectures. Thank you everybody and my best wishes for all of you.